What's up you guys, it's King. I know it's been quite a long time since you've heard my voice, but this video has been long overdue. The last video I made about creating sceneries didn't exactly explain everything I do, and mostly because of the fact that I wasn't putting my all into it, but this video makes up for that. It encompasses a little story I've been working on recently, so here you go. Here's how I actually build a world in the artistic sense. You know, I'll, I'll start off working on some of the world that I'm building without exactly explain, explaining what I'm doing because of the fact that it's going to be different for everyone. And I'm not necessarily explaining how I draw buildings. So the most important part that you'll be referring to the entire time is what is this world or scenery that you're building even about? Is it nature? Is it futuristic, primitive, medieval? What are you going for? What do you want someone to see from the place you're trying to come up with? For this place I'm designing, it's a fishing village that takes inspiration from Venice, Italy and Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. With those two places in mind, my focus is that by the end, the ocean is easily the main source of food just by looking at it and you can tell that people use boats for transportation. The houses will be in fairly poor condition in order to represent that this village hasn't had the best of times recently, but we'll worry about that later. At this point, I'm working on making my buildings as compact yet clustered together in order to give that same vibe that you'll see in any pictures of a neighborhood that's in Rio de Janeiro. And eventually I'll end up putting in some canals in order to give up the idea that there's going to be boats passing through and that there's going to be a net in the middle that kind of shows where people get their food from. These subtle hints come together to create an overall picture of what this scenery, what this world that I'm building is even about. One thing that I keep in mind at the beginning of this process was the actual construction of these buildings in the world that I'm working on. What are they made of? I have a pretty strong admiration for Spanish architecture, so I modeled these houses with the building material that's called adobe. But because it's not in too much detail now, you won't really be able to tell. But I know, right? In Spanish, adobe roughly translates to mud brick, which shouldn't be too hard to make for someone who lives in a place like this, so it works. Moving on, do you see that little spot I drew in the middle of the horizon line? Right there. That's my vanishing point. And I use one point perspective for reference with every building in order to keep them consistently apart from each other and to leave the middle open for the canal I put land on putting there. I'm using my ruler to gauge exactly where each building is in relation to that point in the middle. And if you guys want me to make a video on one point perspective, let me know in the comments because I can make that really easy for you guys. So for right now, I'm filling in these boxes with doorways, windows, etc. in order to give these houses a little bit more realism, to make them feel a little bit more livable. And afterwards, I'm going to be going more in depth with my one point perspective to make the canals and the boardwalks beside it. But remember that keeping your lines light is the most important thing because it actually gives you a basis to work off of because sometimes you don't really get any ideas until they're already on the page. So when I just put lines down without really thinking about it, it becomes easier for me to actually formulate my thoughts and place those onto the page. At this point, I started thinking, is this boardwalk system the only way that people can get around other than by boat? So I started thinking, Maybe if they go over or around another block, they can reach a place faster or maybe some other things can be easily accessible if they take another path. So I started coming up with these 
wooden pathways that go over some houses and have the potential to reach other places in a quicker manner. Eventually, I came to the realization that at this point, it was very easy to just throw things down on the page because I kind of got the feel of how these people are actually living and how things in this world could potentially go. So I just started throwing things down on the page and if it didn't work out, then I erased it. It's whatever, but I have the things on the page to work with so far. And that's the best thing when it comes to creating sceneries. It's fully grounding yourself in the reality of the place that you're living in or the people in this place are living in. Later on, you guys are going to understand a little bit more of what I'm talking about, but don't be afraid to make mistakes because sometimes you can use mistakes to your advantage. Sometimes later on when I'm working on the planks for the boardwalks, I accidentally missed a line or I would stray off a little bit from where I was intending to go. And instead of erasing that line, I would keep it there so when I'm doing the inking process, I can actually go back and make it look like a crack is in the wood or something else, some other form of imperfection because of course, no world is perfect unless you're creating a utopia of sorts. So don't be afraid to make mistakes because sometimes you can embrace those and it will come out looking a lot better than you anticipated. Another thing that came to mind at this point in the creation process are these wooden planks that would be above every doorway so that if the owner of the house came out, they wouldn't necessarily be in complete sunlight. So they could either stand out on the patio or do whatever it is that they're doing. And it really kind of gave me a sense of functionality. So that, of course, whenever people leave their houses, they're not blinded by the sun being out at any specific part of the day. And it kind of gave me a little more sense of cohesion in the overall picture. And when you do things like this, when you're working on a scenario that you're building, it really helps you get a feel for what exactly would help in certain instances to dictate what it is that you're trying to get across maybe if you're trying to draw a forest or a desert or any other type of landscape you could dictate what type of plants grow there by the weather that's there or the type of people that live in an area due to maybe a river nearby or something like that but those things all add up to express what type of 
scenery that you're actually depicting in your drawing. And at this point, you can see that I'm almost done with the inking process and I've added a lot more detail, namely a lot of these doorways have coverings over the planks that I've added. Some have extra things over them. Some of the windows are broken or cracked, so they'll have ply boards over them. There's a boat near the back and there's this large fortress like wall in the background and overall you can see that I've really built a world even though there there are no people in it you can see that it either has been lived in or it's currently lived in and I'm going to come up with a second video tomorrow actually that's going to be going over the coloring process and what colors I use for any given circumstance so tomorrow you guys will see that and sadly it won't be in real time but I will still talk to you guys about what exactly I do and the thoughts that I have based on my coloring process but if you guys enjoyed this video leave a like leave a comment letting me know what you think any drawing ideas or video ideas in the future I'll definitely be happy to oblige you guys and yeah, I'll see you guys next time. King out.